Starting a horse under saddle and getting his career off to the best start requires great feel and timing. A well-meaning trainer with little experience and messy technique can set a colt up for a lifetime of issues. One of the most pivotal moments in a horse's life is being saddled for the first time. If the saddle is introduced in a safe, well-thought-out manner, it builds the horse's confidence and makes it easy to progress his training. If it's done haphazardly, it destroys his trust and wrecks his confidence. For that reason, the first saddling is always one of the most anticipated days of the Colt Starting Clinic. Day two is a big day for these Colts. It's their first saddling. This is a big experience for the Colts. It's their very first time wearing that saddle with the back cinch, front cinch. On a day like this, this is kind of one of those moments we were talking with the students yesterday about where we're kind of leaving the shark cage and we're wandering into the water a little bit. This is one of those one of those moments that can either go really poorly and really wreck the horse's confidence or it can really help the horse and build his confidence. Not only was day two a monumental day for the Colts, but it was the first big test method ambassadors vying for their Colt starting certification would face. To better help the public know which certified instructor to hire, Clinton requires ambassadors wishing to start Colts to secure additional certification. 14 ambassadors were at the clinic to earn their Colt starting certification. So all of our method ambassadors, they come through the academy course, and if they graduate, great. If they don't, they don't. It's, you know, it's not a given that they're gonna graduate, they have to earn it. But they also have to be graduate the cult starting clinic, because cult starting is like a separate subject from the method. It, in a lot of ways, it's similar, but there's a lot of things that are different about it too. So in the journal, you'll see beside somebody's name, if they're, if they're cult starting approved, which is, means that we have our stamp of approval Jeff and I, that they are capable of starting the average colt out there. I'm not saying they're capable of starting a, a 25 year old wild Mustang stallion, okay? But the average two year old that's out there, we believe they have a skill set to start that and, and do a good job for you. So if somebody is a method ambassador and they do, haven't come through the colt starting clinic and we haven't approved them, they're not allowed to be starting colts. We've, we're trying to do this to make sure you as the customer have faith that when you send a horse to be started, they've got the right information to do a good job for you. With the temperature promising to soar up to 108 degrees Fahrenheit, Jeff got the clinic started at 7 a.m. He asked everyone to bring their tack to the arena and line it up on the fence. Instead of a classroom session, he and the other clinicians double-checked the gear making sure everything was in good working order and the billets and breast collars had plenty of holes. After each saddle was inspected, participants carried them over to the cutting pen and lined them up so they'd be ready to go when needed. You know, the last thing you want is to get in the round pen on a horse. You know, he's a little tired. He feels like he might kind of blow up and want to buck beside you. And you don't have enough holes in your latigo to get that girth done up so you can get away from him. Colt starting can be very dangerous even when done properly. So the last thing you want to worry about is that equipment not being either in good functioning order or just plain and simply not having enough holes in your breast collar or not having enough holes in your back cinch billets or something like that. And you can't get that cinch tight to help keep that saddle in place so it doesn't roll under his belly and wreck his confidence and ruin your day. So we spent plenty of time going over everybody's equipment, make sure they've got enough holes, double checking people's latigos, nothing's about to break, nothing's rotten. You know, oftentimes people have in their minds, well, my cold starting saddle just needs to be an old junk saddle, something I've got sitting around the barn, it's got cobwebs, and I only bust it out of the barn when I'm gonna ride my two-year-olds. But the reality is this, your cold starting saddle can be beat up and old and you know look worn out, but it needs to be in good working order. 
we have a lot of saddles that we use when we saddle our personal colts, our two-year-olds or three-year-olds. And they're, yes, they're, they're rough looking, you know, they've got some teeth marks on them, they've got some scratches, they've been rained on, okay, they've, they've been, you know, road hard and put up wet, so to speak, but they're in good functioning order. We keep good quality latigos on there, we make sure all of our offside billets, our back billets are not dry rotted and worn out. You're gonna see on every one of our saddles, if you go look, we have holes punched all the way up to those D-rings. I don't wanna be in the round pin messing around with a colt and not have enough holes to get something done the way I need to get it done so I can get in and out smoothly. So it's very important that even though we don't, you know, we can't dictate to them exactly what they bring, it's important that we make sure it's functional enough that we can get the job done properly and get it done safely. You know, I try to stress to people, when you go to saddle a colt for the first time and that saddle's on his back and you're about to do up that front cinch, look at it like you are going to light a piece of dynamite. And when you light that dynamite, you're not quite sure whether it's going to explode right now as soon as you light the wick or it's going to explode in 20 seconds or two minutes. But you sure as hell better be aware that you've got a piece of dynamite in your hand and you better get that saddle done up, front cinch, back cinch, and get away from this horse as soon as possible. So that's why when Jeff was talking about making sure that people's tack, you know, latigos were in good condition, you know, if there's enough holes in it, you've got the correct girth. Nothing would irritate me more than being in a highly dangerous situation saddling a colt and you get a clinic participant saddle out and you go to you go to do the girth up and they don't have enough holes in their latigo or their latigo is 50 years old and, and it's cracked and got a tear in it or the girth is too big or too small or whatever it is and you got to pull the saddle off and get everything reorganized. You know, there is a certain time frame when you're saddling a colt that it's what we call the green light, that they're, they're using the thinking side of their brain, they're desensitized, they're still a little bit tired, but right then is when they're ready to get that saddle on. If you fiddle fight around too much and you let them get their air back and, and you miss that window of opportunity, then they start getting to where they want to dance around or move around or shuffle around and, and you just kind of miss that window. So I try to tell people when you get that saddle on and you go to do that girth up, you better sure as hell have your wits about you and get in and get away from that thing. If you like dynamite, get away from it because it will blow up in front of you. I remember one time specifically, when I say it will blow up in front of you, it can. I specifically remember one time in Australia, I had a, a, a cult to start and I think he was around four years of age, never been touched. I got a saddle on this thing, okay, and I did the front cinch up, everything goes good. I do the back cinch up, everything goes good. And then I go to take the, the, the stirrup off the horn, and as I took that stirrup off the horn, this horse breaks into a buck and fit. I mean, it happened so damn quick, it was incredible. This horse jumps away from me, jerks the lead rope out of my hand, at the same time kicks out with both hind legs straight towards me. For whatever reason, call it luck, dumb luck, fate, whatever intervention, I happened to kind of duck down and that some bitch's legs went right above my head. And it missed me, but I promise you, if that horse, if I wouldn't have ducked down quick enough, that horse, if it would have kicked me in the head, would have killed me, just like that. And this happened in the split of an, a second, nanosecond, this all happened. He jumped away, jerked the lead rope out of my head, kicked out double barrel, and almost killed me. It can happen that quickly. So that's why we stress about have your tack in, in order, have everything lined up, so when you go to put that ladder go around, you are committed, Get in, get the girth done up, and get the hell away from the horse.
Once the gear was squared away, participants brought their horses to the arena and set to work reviewing the fundamentals exercises they'd learned the day before, including desensitizing to the stick and string, lunging for respect stage one, yielding the hindquarters, and flexing. It was a good warm-up for the horses and gave participants a chance to get a gauge of their horses' frame of mind. Hi, my name is Krista Curry and I'm a Method Ambassador in Birmingham, Alabama. The name of the colt I brought was Steel. Steel is a three-year-old gelding I found on Facebook and rescued out of a neglect situation. I brought Steel home and continued his training. At the clinic, Steel was known for blowing up randomly with the saddle, but after some riding time, he started to show his true colors. He has turned out to be one of the most gentle colts I've ever started and within three months of riding, I rode him all over town in four separate parades, shows, and various trail ride locations. He progressed easily through the method and especially seems to enjoy trick training. To prepare the horses for the first saddling, Jeff introduced a new exercise, lunging for respect stage two. The day before, the class had worked on lunging for respect stage one. Lunging for respect stage one, if you remember, is all about being able to get those colts to move out of your space. When you point, they'll leave with energy on the circle. Then you wanna be able to disengage their hindquarters and get them to give you two eyes. Lunging for respect stage two is literally the, the complete opposite. Instead of pivoting on his front feet and yielding his hind quarters, we'd like him to pivot on his hind feet and yield his fore quarters. So if done correctly, what it should look like is the horse doing a little rollback on the ground. Okay, so when we step out in front of the drive line, we take one big step out in front, and when we point the new direction, I'd like the horse to roll over his hocks, turn 180 degrees, and trot or lope off the other direction. Lunging for a spec stage two is really important that you get this done because it's gonna help you get more control of that horse's front end. The horse's front end is where the majority of their pushiness comes from. You think of any situation where the horse might bite you, push you, step on your feet, run over the top of you. It all comes from that head, neck, and shoulder. So the more lunging for a spec stage two that you do, the more you get that horse moving his front end away from that pressure, the more of that pushiness you're gonna get out of them. It's gonna be much easier for you to get them to change directions. Method Ambassador Josh Standen demonstrated the exercise with participant Wyatt's gelding as Jeff talked participants through the teaching stage. In stage two of the exercise, you're looking for the horse to stop and get back over his hocks. In order to get the horse to stop and roll back, there are six steps you must follow. Step one, turn your palm up. Step two, place the stick in your hand. Step three, slide your hand down the rope. Step four, Take one big step out in front of the drive line. Step five, point where you want the horse to go. And step six, swing the stick next to the horse's head and neck. Like most horses, the gelding was initially confused. Jeff explained the importance of being patient and letting the colt figure the lesson out instead of increasing the pressure and getting after him. The first lesson is the concept lesson, where your only goal is to get the horse to understand what you're asking him to do. You're not after perfection. After the demonstration, participants set to work teaching the fundamentals exercise to their colts. Between each sensitizing exercise, where they moved the horse's feet, they practiced desensitizing the horses to their tools and flexing them. To train your horse to be responsive to your cues as well as to chill out and relax, it's important to balance sensitizing and desensitizing exercises. Before moving on to saddling the horses, 
Jeff taught the class one more exercise. Desensitizing to the rope around the belly prepares the horses for feeling pressure around their girth and flank areas. It allows them to get comfortable with the pressure before they feel the cinches done up for the first time. Something that's really important when you're preparing a young horse to be saddled, this could be a problem horse or it could be a colt that's never been saddled in his life, is desensitizing to the pressure of those cinches around their belly. So the way that we like to do this, we like to do this with the lead rope around their belly. So we throw the lead rope over their back, we bring it up the other side and we wrap it around. And initially all we do is we just kind of seesaw that rope back and forth. Now when I say seesaw, I don't mean you're trying to, you're not trying to take hair off of his belly, but you're just trying to move it around, let him feel it, move it where the front cinch would be, back cinch would be, move it into his flank. And what I'm looking for here is I want those horses to be comfortable with that feeling of that rope moving around under their belly. You know, it's not very common that a lot of people with their hands really rub the horses much right in the middle of their belly like that. So it's a bit of a new feeling. So once they're comfortable with that step, then we move on to the very next step, which is actually starting to put some pressure on and sort of replicate that cinch pressure. So what we do, we get the horse's head bent slightly towards us. We take that lead rope around their belly and we kind of cinch up with one hand and we cinch down with the other hand and apply some pressure where that front cinch would be. A lot of colts, when you first do this, will do all sorts of silly little things. They'll want to move around. They might bite at that pressure. They might want to kick at that pressure. That's why I said you got to stand up there by the shoulder. You got to keep their head bent towards you in case they do something silly. Okay. And the key here is you don't take that pressure away until they stand still and they relax. So I'm going to keep repeating that in that one spot until I basically have no reaction whatsoever. I want to be able to pick up on that cinch and pull it tight and the, the, the horses just stand there completely relaxed and kind of have a, a bit of a numbness to that pressure. Then I'm going to start moving it back more towards our back cinch and I'm going to go up and down his belly like that until I've got as much of that uh, defensiveness and resistance out. And that way, when you go to do this with the cinch, you could certainly just saddle the horses and throw that saddle on them and pull the cinch tight, okay? And you could probably get away with that on a lot of horses. But you're gonna get some colts that are just, you know, they're kind of cinchy enough, they're funny enough and thin-skinned enough that you're not gonna be able to get away with that. And those are those kind of colts that when you go to do the cinch up tight, you're gonna, you'll barely get the cinch up tight and they'll start bucking right beside you. So take the time that it takes to prepare them for that pressure. It, does, it only takes a few minutes to spend a little time desensitizing them to the rope around their belly. And then when you go to put those cinches on, at least they have a feeling of something constricting around their back and their belly, and they're much more likely to have a successful saddling. After everyone had practiced the exercise, Jeff asked a few horsemen to put their horses in the round pens and had the other participants take their horses back to their runs. Then everyone gathered around the round pens for a saddling demonstration. When everyone was gathered around the round pen, Jeff explained how the day would unfold. Participants would prepare their colts in the cutting pen next to the arena by doing groundwork. When their horses were tuned into them and responding well, they'd bring them to a round pen where the clinician or ambassador would saddle the horses. Once all the participants' horses were saddled, method ambassadors testing to be certified to start colts would saddle their own horses. For the first saddling demo, Jeff worked with Dakota's Sorrel Gelding. So, here's what we're going to do. Even after you guys prep them, we're going to do a little prep work in here to make sure that we got the colts under control enough to get the saddle on safely, okay? There's a bit of a sweet spot when you're saddling a colt to where they need to be in this sort of zone where they're willing to stand still, they're comfortable, they're relaxed, they're flexing well enough, so we're going to take our time in the round pen and make sure we do this right. So, what I'm going to do now is a little bit of lunch in stage one. There we go. If you go do all this, let's say you guys go prep them in that cutting pen. You get them prepped, they're doing pretty well, and then we let them stand there for 10, 15 minutes. You're out of that kind of green light zone that I would call it. You're out of that time frame at that point, okay? They've sat there, 
they're back to kind of looking around and messing around and they got their air back a little bit okay at that point you need to go re-prepare those colts not i'm not trying to tell you that they just need to be out of air to saddle them okay but they've got to be willing to stand here while you get that saddle on you see how he, when he quit when he kept running to my right or my left rather you see how i just kept shortening up the rope don't try to wrestle with him okay keep shortening up the rope so he can feel you pointing if he's not getting it go a little shorter still not getting it go a little shorter okay the more you point with slacking that lead rope especially in the beginning the harder it is for them to find this feel see how when i point see how it pulls on the halter now i'm not trying to pull him forward necessarily but i want him to feel it okay Looking for inspiration? Follow us on Instagram. We'll take you with us and share the moments that make the method. I'm gonna gather my rope up. We're gonna do a little lunge in stage two, so shorten up my lead rope a little bit. Step out in front, there. Don't worry about trying to groom them before you put the saddle on them, guys. Just dust the sand off their back. See how I shorten up the rope? There. That way I can pull on his head a little bit more. Pull, don't bump. Pull. When they're really running sideways like that, the more you start jerk, jerk, jerking on that rope, the more they're just gonna run sideways. You're gonna throw his head upside down, he's just gonna run sideways. So I just step to the side and pull. If I need to use two hands, I'll use two hands. So I wanna go in here until I feel like he's comfortable. I wouldn't wanna have this problem right here when I get the saddle on, so I wanna try to get this a little smoother before I put the saddle on his back. Now, we picked this colt, because with any luck, he actually might buck for the saddle a little bit. Now, it's hard, because you really can't tell, just because they're spooky, or maybe a little thin skin, doesn't mean they're gonna buck for the saddle. I've seen some of the quietest, quietest, just dog two-year-olds go off like mad with that saddle. See where I put the stick? Put it up there by his jaw. That doesn't mean you have to whack him with it, but get it up there. Have it as a bit of a block. Let him run into a little pressure when he's running sideways. Step, see that right there? Pull, get it up by his jaw. Pull, get it up by his jaw. Because if you have to swing at his jaw from way back here and you just kind of Hail Mary, swing it up there, you're a lot more likely to hit him in the eye. There we go. Pull. See how he doesn't really respect that drive line, does he? When I step out in front of his nose, that's his cue to stop. Step out in front. There. A little smoother. Even there, you notice he went, but look where the stick goes. Up there. Up there. A little better this direction. If I can touch him, he's too close to me. If he's too close, I usually whack the body part that's closest. Uh, that was probably his best one yet in that direction. There we go. I'm not really after speed. So if you guys have been watching the fundamentals, you might say, well, doesn't Clint talk about hustling out of that turn a lot more? Yes, he does. But when they're not really finding the turn consistently, don't go adding a bunch of pressure to it. There we go. Just want to get this smooth. Step in front. There. 
even there. See how during the turn, how I have that stick up? It's like a block. It's like putting a fence in his face. Get the stick up there. It's like a block. And I'm going to keep doing that until he's really, really good at this. Shorten up the rope, pull, set it up again. Tap, 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 tap. There. So these Colts very much go through stages. You see how he did bad for a little while, then he did a little better. Now he's kind of going through that little bad cycle again. My job is to keep going until I come out on a good cycle. Almost ready here. There we go. A little smoother. There, not too bad there. Okay, yield. Okay, let's bring him to the center. Really get in the habit of doing all your desensitizing if you're gonna be in the round pin in the center of the round pin. Because this is where I'm gonna wanna saddle him. I don't wanna saddle him anywhere near that fence. In case he goes to mash me up against that fence, I don't wanna be pinned between something. Did you notice when Jeff got done moving the colt's feet, the colt was kind of out of air and air was his most valuable commodity, he immediately took him to the center of the round pen and he immediately started desensitizing. Did you notice that not a lot of time went by, he didn't let the horse stand by the fence and air up for five minutes and talk to somebody and then decide to desensitize the horse? The secret to desensitizing the horse to whatever they're frightened of, whether it's the lead rope, stick and string, plastic bag, human being, you must immediately go from moving their feet to desensitizing them. You must make them connect the rest with the spooky object. It is crucial that when you desensitize, you do not have a gap or a time space between when the horse's feet stop moving and then you actually start the desensitizing pr uh, process. It must go from one immediately to the other. Another key factor is not letting the horse rest near the fence. Because when you saddle that colt, you need him feeling comfortable to stand in the middle of the round pen. Why? If you're in the middle of the round pen, you'll have plenty of places to move away from that colt. If he breaks in half and starts bucking, you're not jammed up against a fence or a gate or get yourself into a wreck. always got to be kind of thinking to yourself, guys, worst case scenario, how do I come out of the deal? There we go. So you're going to approach and retreat that a couple of times. There we go. See, I didn't like that leap up on his belly. Whatever it is he's frightened of, just keep repeating it. So we get that jump out of him. I don't want to go reach for that cinch. He jumps, saddle shifts on his back. I see a lot of colts, like look at this colt's withers. See how round his withers are? Saddle doesn't sit real secure on him naturally. You know, this isn't some thoroughbred two-year-old or something like that, you get what I'm saying? So you gotta be thinking about that. I need him standing pretty still, or I need to be able to keep my hands on that saddle if I'm gonna be able to get this done. There we go, that's a little better, effectively. Let's move on, and we'll come back to that a couple times. Back legs, again, looking for our no spots. We got to desensitize him to our saddle pad. There we go, that's a little better. We're gonna flex him, a little better. So right now, there is a bit of a window of time that I've got here, okay? We've got him lunged, we got him kind of thinking, we got him paying attention, using the thinking side of his brain. I don't have all day here to mess around with this. I've got to get to my other tools first if I'm going to be able to get this done without, by the time I get that saddle on him, I don't want him kind of back to using the reactive side of his brain. The crowd's getting anxious, they're throwing hats at him. You see how I got to kind of get moving? Okay. It's a spectator sport, guys. There we 
we go. Retreat. There we go. Check that same thing out on this side. There we go. Rub him. Same thing. See, I just really, like, I'm trying to rub the hair off of him. Really get your hand on him. There we go. There we go. Okay. Let's synthesize him with our stick and string. So I'm not saying they got to stand like a 20-year-old gelding just to get the saddle on. But you're better off going above and beyond to get this jump out of them before you go try to get that done. So I told you guys yesterday, the first saddling, first ride, first three rides really, first saddling, first ride, those are big confidence boosters for the horse. So if you do this incorrectly and this goes poorly, I'm not saying you can't fix it, but it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to rebuild their confidence. There, I like that. Look at his lips. Front legs. There we go. So again, read the green light. If he's giving you the green light stand, move on. Now, what would I do if he was really bad about wanting to stand here after I'm done with this? I just go lunge him again. Just go repeat it. If I don't feel like he's ready, we won't saddle him. And we'll just repeat it, we'll repair it. There we go. There we go, right line, leg caught. Every chance I get, I'm gonna throw that lead rope back out behind me. Not because I'm worried about it getting wrapped around his feet and tied off around his leg or anything crazy like that. But what it can do from time to time is they'll run forward and they'll catch that lead rope and it'll jerk it out of your hands. And what I don't want to happen, especially while he's running away from my tools like this, I don't want him to be able to feel like he can get away from me by running away. That would be very, very counterproductive right now. I want him to think the only way to get rid of that stick and string, spank on the ground, is to stand still and relax. See the level that we're spanking the ground now? That wouldn't be high energy. This is about medium. Like what you see? Then get the app. Join the club. And watch it all. Anytime, anywhere. On any device. Experience the mobile method today. We'll do it out in front. We're gonna repeat that lead rope around his belly, and we're gonna start desensitizing to the saddle pad. There we go. Not too bad. Bring him to the center a little bit more. See how when I walk up to him, walk up to him with a bit of confidence. You know what I'm saying? Especially him, he's a bit of a flinchy kind of, flanky kind of cult anyway. So when you approach him, approach him like there shouldn't be a problem. There, rub him all over here. Just get your hands on him. There we go. Move this up and down. Seesaw it. Pick up. There we go. There. I'm trying to get on a colt like this. Like when I first picked up on that lead rope, this might be a little hard to describe, but he's got that kind of like wired feel to him. His belly's kind of tight. He's kind of defensive. That's, I'm trying to kind of get a little on a colt like this, a more kind of a doughy feel. I want to feel like I'm squeezing this around a big old bean bag, okay? I want him just numb there to that cinch pressure until he just ignores it. There. Let's go flex him here a little bit. There we go. When you guys are preparing those horses, lots and lots of this flexing. Get them really comfortable there and here in this bent position. There. Same 
same thing. Confidently. Like there's no problem in the world. I couldn't imagine why you might be scared of me. There we go. Rub that flank. There we go. Too bad. I'm gonna get our pad down. Since the size of our saddle pad, same thing. Always in the middle. Get him in the habit of being real comfortable here. So initially, I'm just gonna kind of put that rope out behind me, kind of let him smell that pad a little bit. There we go. And kind of take it away. Approach and retreat, approach and retreat. There, when he shows a little interest in it, now I might just kind of start moving it up and down. There we go, kind of throwing it on and off his back. Kind of treat it like that lead rope, on and off his back, on and off his back. Now something that I'm kind of looking at, whenever I'm throwing a saddle pad on and off, I'm kind of looking at his back a little, guys. What's his back doing? Is his back really flinching and getting tight? I can see his back just before I throw the pad on there. Is it flinching and really getting tight? Or is he standing there numb as a post? Okay. I really want to pay attention to that because that's going to tell you a lot. Because when you go to throw the saddle on, obviously that's going to have a little weight to it. See how short I got that rope? Don't pull his head on top of you. Don't put him in too much of a bind. But don't be letting that head get too straight. They might be able to turn away from you there. There we go, on and off, on and off. Now I'm gonna throw it on more like he's just an old broke kid's pony. That's it, throw it on there with some confidence. See, I don't like that kind of slapping the other side of his body. So I gotta go get rid of that jumpiness. Rope out behind me. On and off. See where his head is? That's a good amount of tip at this point. No more than that, otherwise he'll feel too trapped. Let's flex him a little with that pad on. There we go. I like that, him being able to have his head bent, kind of see that pad out of the corner of his eye. That'll scare a lot of colts. There we go. And let's go repeat that again. See how I'm standing up here by his shoulder? There we go. that pad back and forth, up and down his neck. I like to saddle a colt as best I can. If I got an old saddle pad that's really broke in, already been on a bunch of horses, already kind of contoured to a horse's back, I'm, sort of, I'm not saying you can't start a colt. I'm gonna leave it on him and change sides. And get a hold of that pad as quick as I can. I'm not saying you can't saddle him in a new saddle pad, okay, but the only drawback to that, like I said, is it's kind of not broke in. It's not really shaped to a colt's back just yet. Sometimes you have to worry about that pad kind of slipping around. I don't really care if it's, you know, wool or neoprene or something like that. I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. That's sort of a personal preference thing, in my opinion. There we go. There we go. See how we're being a little bit more just kind of careless with that pad? Yeah. You're broke, aren't you? Still not got his head straight, still not, not paying attention, but got to throw it on there with some confidence. Don't think you can come up here and sneak that saddle pad on him, and that's going to be able to get the job done. There we go. Want more? Get more. The No Worries Club is the best way to get the most out of your training experience. Stick around to find out more. Hey mate, Clint Anderson here. For the past 20 years, I've devoted my life to creating the best training tools and videos available to help bring my method to you. But there's only one problem. You can't bring your TV into the arena.
That's why we've been hard at work developing a new platform to deliver the method to you in a whole new way. A way that brings 20 years of horsemanship and puts it in the palm of your hand. Introducing the mobile method. It's part of the new Down Under digital experience and it makes learning the method easier than ever before. Let me show you how it works, mate. Now you can always have access to the method, even when you're on the go or at the barn. The Down Under Horsemanship app gives you access to your digital training kits and allows you to download videos and training content directly to your mobile device or view them on your computer. The Down Under Horsemanship app also offers over 86 hours of free in-depth training content. No worries, club members will have full access to Clinton's ever-growing training library and a massive amount of members-only features and information. And the best part is, you can view and interact with each lesson on your mobile device or computer, giving you ultimate access to the method anytime and any place. The method is the key to getting the most out of your partnership with your horse. We want everybody to experience the difference it will make. That's why we created three new ways for you to get the training content you need at the price you want. Our basic level allows you to purchase and download training content to your device at our standard price with no annual fee. When you become a No Worries Club member for $19.99 a month, you get up to 50% discount on any of your purchases. Plus, you get eight digital videos and four digital journals a year and access to the No Worries Club website, the largest collection of method material and resources in the world. Plus, you can become part of our social network and chat with thousands of other folks just like you. If you want the ultimate experience, mate, the premium membership is for you. You get all the benefits of the No Worries Club, a printed copy of our No Worries Club quarterly journal, and access to all of the method and the professional series kit training videos. Altogether, that's thousands of dollars of horse training and 20 years of horsemanship delivered right to your fingertips. So there you have it, folks. The new mobile method app is the easiest and most effective way to deliver the maximum amount of knowledge at a minimal amount of time. And with the new No Worries Club, you can be assured you're gonna get exactly what you need at a price that's right for you. It's a free download, so what are you waiting for, mate? Get started today. Start your digital training experience today. Visit our website and download the Down Under Horsemanship app to experience the method in a whole new way.